Today, we will learn about Excel for genealogy. I'm your trainer, Lori Coffey. Now we're getting into the power of Excel to do the math for you with formulas. It's a little tricky, but easy once you know how. Let's start with the easiest way to see totals, either sums or counts. This is a database to keep track of your research categories and types, an excellent way to ensure consistency in your references. We have four types in the archives category, but how many in the birth records category? A lot, right? <laughs> what if after you selected them, the count automatically appears on your screen? It does. On the status bar at the bottom of your screen, way down there, auto-calculate appears next to views and sizing options, and it may already be on. Just look for it. If it's not on, right-click on the status bar to open your options list. I have three formulas checked that will all show depending on the data type I have selected. Excel can only count text. It can't add text. But with the numbers data type, it can calculate like sum and average. Auto-calculate will only show based on the cell's data type. Remember, if you put spaces in, it can't read the data type. The first thing in a cell tells it what the data type is. And we can change that on the Home tab, the data type there. To create your own formulas, we do it a little differently than what you learned in school. Did anybody else have him for the math? <laughs> That's my math teacher. First, we create it horizontally, starting with the equal sign followed by numbers, entered as a number data type with a mathematical operator like plus. If you type it into the formula bar instead of the cell, it will perform better, especially if you use cell references in the formula instead of simple numbers. Click off the formula bar to see the answer. Let's look at how to use a formula to display the birth date. Here we know the year they died, and we know their age when they died. So what year were they born? Subtract the age from the year, right? Even I can do that math, <laughs> but I don't want to have to. To start a formula, select the cell where you want the answer to appear and enter the equal sign. That puts Excel into formula mode. <laughs> That's not that, that little dog that loves to fetch. That's formula mode. Then click in the cell with the died year. Type in the minus sign, then click the age at death. When you click out of the cell, you're done. It's that easy. Just be careful that you don't click on things you don't mean to click on, because when you're in formula mode, they all go into that cell. Then when you know the formula is correct, use autofill to copy it down. Instead of clicking and dragging, double click on it. The formula is duplicated all the way down, slightly changed based on the row that it's in. E2 minus G2 changes to E15 minus G15. It's a relative change. That's why we use Excel for genealogy, because it's a relative change. Okay, that was a joke, but it's true. Formulas are very flexible. You can use cell references or numbers or both. If you use a cell reference and you don't want those cells to show, you can hide them. To hide the columns that make up the formula, Right-click the column name and select hide. Oh, there's unhide too. How can you tell the column is hidden? How can you tell? A letter missing. See, that's why I'm, I'm a wordsmith. I recognize that there's a, a letter missing. <laughs> there's also, you can see a, a second line that's very small. That's new. Select both columns, then right-click. 